Hey, Sean, how you doing today? Hey, Chris, I'm great, man. How you? Hey, everybody. Yeah, man, I am so. Uh, this is going to be an epic show. I am so honored to have you on. I've known this guy for a while now. You're going to learn a ton from him. Um, I, I love the, you know, I love one of the things he says he's going to tell you about, you know, his, yeah, as you can probably see that social cloud suite in the back. I, I kind of love it when we talked about it. He's like, you know, I love the software so much. I bought the company. And anytime somebody goes, I love something so much. I bought the company. You know, you got to listen to him. And the interesting part is every time you hear that from somebody, they've gone through some struggle or they've gone through some change in their life, as we like to call it, the hero's journey. Sean, give our audience a quick overview of your of your own hero's journey. Sure. Well, and I, I would tie that in, Chris, to a little bit of social media story for that, right? So t 10 years ago now, I quit my job. I had a great job with Caterpillar, uh, but I was flying all the time. My wife wanted me home. I quit my job. We bought a gym. We bought a weightlifting gym. And uh, coming from Caterpillar, uh, I was accustomed to billion-dollar marketing budgets. And I was rapidly branding our tiny little business right into oblivion. <laughs> and, and at about that same time, uh, this idea of social networking and social media was beginning to really bubble up, right, and, and become popular. And a friend, Joe Stankowski, introduced me to a flip cam in YouTube. And how do you could do videos to promote our our you know our business our gym and connect with our audience in the, out in the world in a new way right with the people's media and video and we started doing this uh, nine years ago or so now and we've been doing it ever since and and, and it's just an entirely uh, organic use uh, for me of, a, of an actual business guy uh, you know organically using social media to connect with people grow business make new friends make opportunities and and it's just evolved in an, in an incredible way but it all it all came back from all came from my flip cam which doesn't exist and my blackberry which doesn't <laughs> exist <laughs> to where we are today, right, with uh, a billion people a day on Facebook. So it's, it's been a, a raucous ride and, and uh, 10 years of success with that business. We just had our, our biggest year ever, and now we're exceeding that this year. So it's working well for that business and others too, Chris. So I'm excited to share, you know, a, not, not really a, a guru's perspective, but an actual business guy's perspective. Yeah, and that's so great. And it's you know I'm laughing here because I grew up in the Lehigh Valley, so I'm more of a Ma I'm more of a Mack truck guy than a, than, a, than a Caterpillar guy. But that's besides the point. But the other thing I find interesting is, you know, you're not the first person to come from the fitness world and and be a, an incredible, I'll say, social media guy, an incredible marketer. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know Charlie McDermott. Uh, the name might ring a bell. His yeah, his kids on ABC The Middle, and um, I happen to you know I'm friends with him, and it's kind of it was interesting to. You when I first met him and he started talking about GKIC and, and all that type of marketing. But then his, you know, his philosophy was the same. It's like, dude, just get started on a flip cam and, you know, just get, you know, get started. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and he was also the part of the reason I bring it up is because for those of you who don't know, he started off, I'll say it's very similar to you, Sean, which is owning a gym. He built it, he built it, mm -hmm. he built it when he was still in Westchester university, um, yeah. and has now made the same transition. So the reason I bring all that up is because what whatever business you're in at this point, if you come across this episode of Expert Showcase, this episode applies to you regardless of what business you're in. So just because Sean and I started talking about fitness, just because you know we're talking about flip cams and all the other stuff, whether it's in Sean's hero's journey or whether it's what we're going to talk about in the expert focus segment about that party principle, you need to stick around and watch because this episode is for you. So, Sean, let's go back to the beginning and let's look at let's let's talk about the beginning for a while. I mean, you know, you were at Caterpillar. You said your your uh, your wife wanted you home off the mm -hmm. you know off the road. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this who are going through something similar, and I think what they'd love to understand is how did you make the decision to go from that corporate job to doing something doing something else? Can you take us through that a little bit? Well, I can tell you very specifically. A, a friend of mine uh, named Steve and. Steve had uh, bought a business, and I frankly, it, ne it had never the light when it had never occurred to me that you could acquire an, an ongoing business. I, 
just never occurred to me, right? You could have a job or you could start a business, but to just buy one? <laughs> Who knew, right? right. But he, he found one, and, uh, and it, it worked great for him. He, may, he was able to make an investment, take over that, add his insights and energy to it, and it went really, really well for, for him. And we were involved in athletics and exercise, and my wife was a fitness trainer, and we have been a coach, and we've always been in that way, and we, we loved being in the gym. And, and I had this idea, Chris, that well, it was going to be like cheers, right? I was going to buy this gym, and I was going to be there, and I was going to sit there all day long and, you know, and hand out towels and sell drinks and know everybody by name. <laughs> so we bought this place, and, uh, and and off we go. But I tell you what, I, a lesson I learned from that transition that I like to share with people, and not, not to be negative, but it's real. Uh, as part of a successful organization, I believe that I vastly overrated my ability as an entrepreneur. I think my my own opinion of my business savvy as an, as would be as a business owner or entrepreneur was 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 really. Uh, jaded by having been actually a, a cog in a wheel of a really successful team and and so being you know that transition from you know job and team member to being the decision maker and in the, the you know the the all you know the, the be all end all of making rain and, and, and making the place uh, operate and everything in between was a rough one man it was it was really really difficult uh, but you know, we, we, we kept at it and we got better. And, you know, you know that, that flip cam was one of the things that we did that, that helped yeah. us get better and, and effectively connect with people in a way that we hadn't been able to do before. Yeah, and I love, I love what you talk about. I think we'll talk about more of that, you know, maybe the turning point or the aftermath, just about the fact of going from a, you know, being a cog in a wheel to being, you know, being the be, you know, being the be all end all. So they get scared some people, and I think also some people don't take it into account. Um, the interesting part, though, is that one of the things I find interesting is that you were successful at Caterpillar. Um, and in fact, let, let me not take this for granted. I'm guessing you were, I'm gonna ask you a couple of quick yeah, quick questions. You were successful at Caterpillar, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you kind of had a lifestyle that, that you had a lifestyle that at least supported you and your wife financially, at least at least at a decent level. I'm not saying you were, you know, uber wealthy, but you know, you at least, you didn't want, you didn't want for anything. You weren't hurting for money, right? No, we were doing all right. So, most people would think, well, you know, that's what's going to make somebody happy. That's what's going to make the wife happy. We're successful. We've got, um, you know, I've got, a, I've got a good job with a good stable company. And, you know, this should all be happy and successful. Um, when your wife came to you and said she wanted you, she wanted you home more, do you remember either a con the conversation you had or how you reacted when, you know, the, this kind of, this change was suggested? Or, or was it a single moment or yeah. was it over a time? I think it was over time. And I, and I think there was two things. Uh, if you look at it, you, you know, you self he, he, he who self-reflects the best wins, right? And yes. <laughs> there were two things. Uh, and one thing was, was you know, we're, we live in, we actually live in the house my wife grew up in. We were, we're, we're entrenched in the community and her family. And the next move in that corporate hierarchy was a move. <laughs> so for me to make another elevation, I would have had to move to Houston, Texas. And in Houston's all right, but that was not high on my family's agenda. So we knew that my career had, had kind of capped if I was not willing to do that. And uh, the, the, but the, the funny irony of that is in the job that I had, in the job I would have had there, I, I still, I flew almost every day. I was never, almost never home. And when you do that, you know, people don't really understand the, gr the grind of that travel in the long days that we would have and then entertaining deal. I was in dealer development work, so mm -hmm. we would entertain dealers then in the evening and that sort of thing. It was long days. Yeah. So the, the, real, the real problem at home, Chris, is when I get home, I was cooked. I, I'd come home on Friday night and sleep until Monday morning when I had to go back. And that's when, it, that's, that's when she said, hey, buddy, yeah. <laughs> if, 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 when you're here, you've got to be here. Right, and that's still true today. Right, when when we're when we're home and with our family, we need to be present with our family, and we've got to have good harmony there. Um, and that's that's a big challenge for for all men. But you've got to be home and present when you're home. 
Yeah, it's so right. And it's kind of interesting you bring up the travel because I worked in corporate America and, uh, you know, I for a time loved the, loved the travel and being a speaker, you know, it's something that one of my goals is to be on stage during 65 days, a straight, literally one day every, you know, uh, 365 straight days somewhere in the country. So I'm ramping up for that huge travel schedule. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is after a while, no matter how much you love it, it does get to be, it does get to be a grind. And it does get to be, you got to get to the to point where you say, you know, okay, this is, you know, and any road warrior will tell you that, right? And then it's not just your eight hours that you're there, but it's it's the entire day, um, like you said, at night. Now, the interesting part, though, is, and I think we'll talk about this more later, I think it kind of predisposed you to the rigors and understanding what it was going to be like to run your own company and to to succeed at least at the beginning, especially from a brick and mortar business, the, the gymnasium, because, you know, whether it's brick and mortar or even what we do here, you know, it's not nine to five. I mean, you know, for yeah. people who get into this, what we do, um, and think it's going to be, hey, we're just going to, you know, make it nine to five. I mean, social class suite can make it easier, but it's still not a, it's still not a snap your finish off. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's still not a nine to the grind, working hard in the grind is not hard for me. That comes natural to me very easily. Um, the, the trick, so the trick for me, it's one of the things you see, you know, on social media and things today, you see a lot of rise and grind stuff, right? And that's a big hashtag, rise and grind. The grind comes natural for me. So in my case, rise and shine is what I'm looking for. <laughs> At the, grind, I, the grind comes all on its own. So the, it's, the, it's the rise and shine part where I have to make sure my mindset is right. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, I think that's, and I think that's a great place for us to go and, and dig a little deeper into the turning point. And, um, you know, you were there, you were successful. It came to a point where things just weren't, things just weren't working anymore at home. So you went and you did what was right. You bought, um, you got into something else that would keep you that would keep you home. And I think really we have two turning points here. One is the turning point from when you did that into starting your, your business. And the second one is when, when you overbranded your business, as you were saying, and it, you know, you know, it was, it was difficult. So let's split them up here real quick and we'll, we'll dive into just on the surface of both of them. The turning point, um, let's finish up the turning point on the home life. And when you decided to um, to buy the to to buy the business. Now I know you said your wife was also a, a fitness trainer and in an athletics. So did that make the decision to buy a gym easier or more difficult? No, that was that that made it, uh, and that and that may have been a, a you know if somebody's watching this and they're thinking about buying a business that that may have been uh, the the worst part of that decision was to take a hobby and turn it into a business. Uh, I have ruined two hobbies in my life by turning them into a business. I, I don't recommend that, uh, and I wouldn't, and I will not do it again. Uh, but I, I can tell you that the, you know, when it becomes, you know, 24/7, 365, it's not as fun anymore <laughs> as when it's a hobby, right? And you realize that as you're there running the business and you're watching everybody else have fun doing what used to be your hobby, <laughs> you can, you can almost turn on you. Right, it can almost turn on you. You have to be careful to maintain uh, enthusiasm for what what you what you eventually probably lose if you turn that hobby into a business. I did that with the golf business when I was in my twenties. I did the same thing, but the the you know the the other thing I want to be, be completely transparent and and you know Amy is is was never uh, Amy was clear that. You know, another alternative would be better for her, and, and Amy was clear that uh, you know going to Houston would be okay, but not something that she wanted to do. The real trigger for me, to you know, the, the actual trigger, it was the actual trigger for a lot of people when they leave a company. I got a bad boss, and I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't leave that company, and I didn't leave those coworkers. The minute I got that boss, I began to plan my exit strategy, and I began to squirrel away money and, and try to find a way to make a, a, a graceful exit out of that company. And that's the, that's the number one. So those of you that have employees, <laughs> listen up. It's true. The number one reason that good people leave companies is because they get a bad boss. And it's not because they don't fit there or they don't like it there. It's just that that 
that burden uh, becomes too great. And that was the trigger for me. Yeah, and for, for those of you bosses out there, remember this. Just because you're trying to hide it, everybody knows. <laughs> you know, there, there's a there's an old saying that CEOs never wanna never wanna let their people give them performance reviews because they don't want to know their, their flaws and it's like they, they know. They they know already. You know, I know I've been a good boss and I I'm quite sure I've been a bad boss at, at some points mm -hmm. in, in you know in different companies. Um, and you know, it's no matter what I did, I'm quite sure that that people knew it. I mean, it wasn't anything on purpose, but Anyway, but I think that's epic gold. I mean, that right there really is just you know the the epic gold for the people who own businesses is be a bit you know be a better boss and and um, you know and the other piece there that I love was turning a hobby into a, into a business and a lot of people think it's going to be great, but it's kind of like when you're forced to do something. It, there, there's a, I think there's a difference. I think, in my opinion, if a hobby is something you wake up thinking about every single day and doing every single day, and if you don't do it for a day or two, you really, I'll say, jones to do it, it might be a good thing. In my opinion, it might be a good thing to turn into a business because maybe it is really what you're, you know, what you're looking at doing. Like, as an example, people, if you're on Periscope or Blab every day, think about contacting us and becoming a show host because obviously you love to do this. This stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but I think there's that line that you, that I, you're hundred percent right there, Sean, there's that line that you, there's that line that you draw that when you cross over it, you know, it becomes drudgery. You know, it's kind of like the, the last quick point I want to make. It's kind of like when people look at professional athletes and go, how can you retire? You know, you're just playing a game. It's like, yeah, it turned at some point into a really just drudgery, you know, it's like, geez, I have to, I have to do this again today. So let's yeah. look, go ahead. Well, you can, and, and I think, uh, and obviously, like everything, that's a matter of, of, of managing mindset, right? And that's very, very important, managing mindset and maintaining that. I, I think that the thing that you need to recognize, you know, like, you know, when I turned my passion for playing golf into being the golf business, I, I didn't get to play golf anymore when everybody else was, right? Oh, yeah. That's just the reality. And the same thing, true, if you're running the gym, you don't get to work out, and everybody else is having fun working out, you're running the gym. So you, need, you just need to recognize that that, that enthusiast passion is, is probably going to be replaced by different activities, and you need to be prepared to manage that mindset of that transition. And yeah. running any business is, is not easy, right? And so it is, it's very important that, that you, know, you feel passionate about the problem that you solve, and you're clear about the problem that you solve with your, your business, and you, and you stay, you know, and you remain passionate about that. Uh, just recognize that I think a lot of people naively enter, you know, enter into business that, you know, because they like it as as a hobbyist, and they they they're disappointed as I was to discover that. Well, I don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, because goodness knows, Sean, the worst thing that can happen is when you're bench pressing 450 and somebody comes over and needs a towel or didn't get their paycheck right. Not a good situation to be in. Be, you know, it's not like you know, it's not like you say, "Wait a minute, wait till I'm done with my next rep." It's like you know, and they kind of have a little leverage over you when you're underneath. There's always, yeah, there's always something to be cleaned or fixed or tweaked. Or it never ends. It never ends. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at your business a little bit from a, when you said you were over branding because I think that really starts to get us into the the aftermath. So there was a turning point in the branding and the marketing, I think of your of your health club and your fitness your, your fitness center that you know got you to that got you to start to make a, a a change and do things differently, right? Sure. Well, you know, and and I'll mention uh, you know across my office from me is a whole rack of Dan Kennedy books, and you mentioned. You know Charlie and GKIC earlier, and 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 I can tell you that you know what what happens to me is what happens to a lot of small business people, and and uh, Dan Kennedy was one of the triggers for me in in, in figuring that figuring it out, uh, and and but that you, you got all of these people that are coming to you um, in the guise of consultative selling. Uh, and they, so they're coming to you as consultants, as a business owner or manager, and the reality is they are media salespeople, right? And and that's what and they they they're trained to come with a fine consultative hat, 
And But I assure you that if they work for the radio station, that the media that your business should be advertising in is absolutely going to be radio, right? <laughs> Regardless of whether or not that makes any sense for you. And, and that's the reality. So as you're a new business owner and you want to be nice to people, and especially if you're in a community like we are with a, with a physical business, Gosh, you don't want to be rude to any of these people. You know, they might be prospects or they might talk to someone. So you entertain all these folks and they consult you into a lot of bad spots. And they can consult you into spending a whole lot of money uh, branding, getting your name out there, doing all these, you know, awareness campaigns that don't actually drive action. And what we learned, of course, from Dan Kennedy and JKIC was the marketing triangle, right? We learned media message market match. And what, what I had to learn about that fitness business, and it's it's a unique business, Chris. It's a hardcore weightlifting gym. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry. I've got a little bit going on. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a hardcore weightlifting gym, and uh, our primary uh, ideal avatar is a young dude. And what we sell those young dudes is confidence, and as much as and as much as you know the radio or the newspaper or that they they might touch those people sometimes. They do not have the ability to put that triangle on that young dude in my community. They're not targeted enough with their media to match my message to my market, and so that activity of branding. Was was literally blowing up our profitability ineffectively, and we had to make changes. Yeah, and, and you're so right, and it's so um, it's so interesting because I mean, being in the business, being in the business I'm in, of course, my main thrust for people is you should be out there on video because video is a very powerful, very powerful medium. But whenever I work with a client, the first thing we do is go through that and we figure out what really is the right media for you. Because if it's, you know, if you're going to come to me and your ideal client is 65 years old and listens to NPR, now there's a good chance that there's a good chance we're not a good fit for you. And we would steer you in the direction of, of trying to get, you know, trying to get ads on radio and that sort of thing because you've got to go where your, you know, you got to go where your, um, you know, where your clientele is. Like you said, media message and, and market. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you did what I'll say what most business owners do, which is throw a lot of money, or at least it, those that have the ability to throw a lot of money at all the advertising and, and branding and getting your name out there. And it kind of, and it kind of, Sounds like it kind of fell flat a little bit, or maybe a lot. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to diminish it, but I. <laughs> well, this, you know, this was happening at the same time that the economy was going into it into a terrible slide, right? And and we had a, you know, we had a rough time in the late, uh, you know, 08, yeah. 09, right? That was that was tough, and uh, so we, we had to we had to really learn how to focus. We had to really learn, uh, you know, how to how to run the business in a very effective way. And then how to do our marketing in such a way that we, you know, very specifically, you know, dialed in that triangle, that we knew that avatar, we spoke to that avatar. And, you know, one of the things I, I, that I learned in, in video, and, and this is, this is a, a fantastic tip, and this is actual, uh, actual actor training, is I learned to communicate specifically to one person. I learned to talk to you. And I, I would think about you and visualize you, and through the camera, I will speak to you, right? And when I did when I did that, and I knew the dude, there was a dude, that, and, and, and he has a name. His name is Gavin. He was a he was a member. He was a, he was my ideal avatar. And I would go on video, and I would speak to Gavin about what I knew would motivate him, and in other people that then looked like him, right, would see that. And have this, God, he's talking to me, <laughs> right? They have that moment. So that in actor training, they talk about speak to one to communicate with many, right? right? So, but you have to speak. You want to speak directly and specifically to one in, in a very specific emotional basis. And what will happen is there are many people that are in a similar place, and when they see that, it will communicate to them in a very powerful emotional way and you can convey that effectively in video and very uniquely in video and and I think you know, you know obviously in branding you know we stick our logo on stuff or we put our logo out in the community that's yes I mean really you know, 
throw money in the air, whatever, right? But when when I can deliver, you know, especially with social media now, right? And we, we can talk about this if you want to, but we can, I can, I can dial, I can deliver that message with a very high probability to that audience, and I can use video to do it in a in a in a way that I can't really replicate in any other way. I can do it every day. I can do it twice a day, right? And I can and I can nail. I can deliver it right into the literally right into their hands, right? <laughs> I yep. can deliver it right into their freaking hands. Yep, and, exactly. And I can do it for free. It's extraordinary, right? This is, this is unfathomable to me, right? I have I have a 4K video right here in my hand, right? Yeah. And I can deliver it for free right into your little hand. And it's just a remarkable thing, man. It's just it's it's a true revolution in in human communication and a complete game changer for business. Yeah, definitely. And that kind of leads us into the aftermath. We've been talking about it a little bit, but I think we want to get you know a whole a whole lot deeper um, before we get into the expert focus segment. So for those of you watching, you got to stick around because we're going to be you know Sean's definitely going to be telling you about you know the new party the new party principle on how you get social media success. You got to be here, um, you know, and, and it's kind of. Um, it's interesting because I think it it shows an arc that a lot of people go through. You know, they they listen to they listen to a lot of pundits and and like a, like you like you had said, uh, they listen to a lot of pundits who are in it for them for themselves before they find out what really resonates with their with their avatar and with their ideal client. So so let me ask you that. Once you started instead of instead of going out and, and as they say, net fishing versus spear fishing, once you started to spear fish and once you had Gavin as that avatar and once you were able to talk directly to Gavin, how'd that change your business? Uh, it it made a, a <clears throat> it made a steady it made a consistent flow of leads. Uh, but the, the remarkable thing is by the use of video and the use of video in the space, it was the, the staff noticed, I noticed, you, you could feel people would walk in the door of what, what's it's a pretty intimidating place, Chris. I mean, it's, like, it's this Flex Fitness Center, it's world famous, this is an intimidating place, there are world champions abound, right? It, it's, it's not, this isn't. Planet Fitness, okay, uh, and so when people walk in, they're a little bit intimidated usually, and and I'm not saying rightly so. They're just I'll, I'll just let that be. But they'll they'll walk in, and but what you could see was their their they would relax, their respiration would, would relax, their their comfort zone would because they recognized the space. They'd been there before, right? They it been right in their hand. That I've been here before. Oh, I've I've seen. I know you. You're the guy on the video, right? Or or I've seen him or her. They're on videos, right? And and I've I've been here before. And and you'd see, you know, so some some things would happen is you know when you come in a gym, you go on a tour, right? I don't know why that is, but that's what it is. But that's what happens. So so people would come in and and we'd say, would you like to come tour this? And they're like, no. I'm good. I've seen. I've seen it. I. I'm completely confident based on what I've seen online that this is the culture that I want to be in. Else, I would not be here, right? Yeah. And and what and what the reality is is that people that would have been afraid when they walked in, they they didn't even come in because they knew what happened in there, right? And yeah. the folks that that wanted to be there, that made sense for them, they they oh here yep yep this is this is congruent. Everything is that. Yep, this is congruent. You're you're the same guy. You're authentic. You're real. Yep, that's. I saw that guy. Everything. I'm good. Yeah. Sign me up. Right. Well, on that, and, and we we yeah. were able to do that before they ever walked in the door. Yeah, and that becomes a real key. It's funny because back in the day, I grew up around and and uh, worked out the same place as a couple of professional wrestlers. So I mean, it's something that you know I kind of get how intimidating that environment you know can that environment can be and. You know, you have to. You know, it's it's something that it will attract who it attracts, and it will attract your your right clientele. And mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, is whether you own a gym, or whether you own a brick and mortar store, or whether you you know whether you're doing things on the internet, you too can attract those ideal clients who are just gonna say. You're congruent. I like you. I want to be around you. I want you here. You know, I'm I'm good. And and for for people, I mean, it's you know, we'll talk about social media in a little bit. 
that's really the key of, of social media, you know, and whether it's video or other pieces of social media to get your ideal client to recognize themselves. And like you said, get recognize themselves when you're talking and be attracted to um, being and around you and in, in your business. That's the same. It's it's a little bit of movie star, right? It's a little bit of movie star because people think they know you, right? Yeah. I've seen you. I heard you. I, 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 I've. I've seen you in different emotional states. I right, and they they I mean they know you right. I mean they, they and in their mind they don't know the difference right. Your, your mind cannot tell the difference between if that was your face or a camera. If that's your nose or a camera, your mind doesn't really know the difference. Right? It's just you're seeing me, feeling me, hearing me, and people people had. They just resonated, right? Or, or, or they didn't, and that's cool, right? If they don't resonate, don't don't come here. That's that's cool, right? Yeah. Um, and and that's, you know, if you want to talk about you know tips in this process, uh, the other thing that we figured once we understood our avatar, we also understood who was not our avatar, and we know we 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 no longer welcomed them, right? And, and we didn't say you know go away, but we no longer welcomed them, and so we. What we and we used to waste, frankly, a good deal of, of their time and our time with people who were not good fits for our culture, but we wanted their money, right? And and because we needed their money, right? But they weren't a good fit. And and when we actually got more efficient, more effective, and dialed in in who that clientele was and what they wanted and who they weren't and, and that we got much more efficient and we got much more profitable because we knew uh, who who we, who we wanted and who we did not and those that we did not they, they never came in they never joined we didn't convince them to join right and then they were not they weren't unhappy right so the only people that come in now almost exclusively are people that fit and they're happy when they join and the and the whole thing goes well and you know <laughs> so the and but these are you know you mentioned this earlier and it's important and I'll, and I'll just take it if I can these are universal principles right these are universal principles it's true of every business right and every and every market and every business and every town it's no different in Knoxville or Dallas or, or Sacramento right uh, th these are human things so what when, when I discovered this and became good at this and at Caterpillar I had been a trainer that's why that's why I was out dealing with dealers all the time I was training them in effectiveness and frankly you know I, I got bored uh, in that that vision I had of working in the gym I got bored <laughs> and so I'm learning about business in a new way that I didn't know before. I, I now have an empathy for business owners that I didn't have before, right? I didn't understand before, and I'm learning all of this effectiveness, you know, in, in how to how to do these things and, and get my company profitable. And I'm a trained trainer, right? And I'm and I'm just going nuts. So I started to train other companies. I tried to tra started to train other businesses, and and and, and that's from, from that grew a consulting company, and from that. Through other opportunities and, and, and things like the college suite that you mentioned. Now that's a little a little acquisition that we made and brought into our consulting company. So it's it's just grown and grown from from there. But that's that's the journey, right? And and <clears throat> you talk about the the job. The the hero's journey is not complete until the hero returns from whence he came and and gets somebody and brings them out, right? And shows them the way out, right? Yeah. And and for me, I I had to go. And, and tell other other people, you know, how to do these things that I had figured out how to do. I could I could not help myself, and and that that was the that's the fulfillment of the journey, right? Is when it, it's not just that you escaped from the village, right? And you and you beat the evil knight and you escape. That that that's cool. But until you go back to the village and and, and grab a hand of somebody else and show, look, I, sh I beat the knight. It's I got this. Don't worry. Let me show you the way around the dark night. It's cool. We got this. <laughs> and until you do that, the hero's journey is not complete. Yeah, that's so true. You know, and I think that's a great place to. To, to lead the hero's journey on and, and to kind of wrap up this piece of the this piece of the show folks you know you've been watching you know an epic guy Sean Miller who who's had a very interesting journey from being in 
uh, from being in corporate America with Caterpillar to starting to buying a, a, a fitness center, turning that in, into a very successful fitness center with a few bumps along the way. Um, and, you know, now helping people realize that that social media, at least one piece of this consulting business, helping people realize that you know, there's a new party principle of social media that's going to lead to your success. So stick around. We'll be right back and we're going to dive much more into the new party principle for social networking success. Give us about 30 seconds and we'll be right back. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now, you'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.